Risk control, implementing strategies to reduce the risk of workplace hazards causing harm. So now that the risk level of each hazard within a workplace has been evaluated from the risk assessment stage of risk management, we now can implement appropriate risk control methods to help eliminate or minimize the potential of each of these risks causing harm within a workplace. Risk control measures are classified into three categories, and that's what we're going to look at today, and this is going to emulate the hierarchy of risk control. So the first level is that of eliminating the risk, where we completely remove a hazardous element from the workplace. So if there's a machine or a procedure that we do and there's a danger associated with that, we completely get rid of it, and that is the elimination of that. Now. This is obviously the best case scenario because the hazard is completely gone, but quite often these hazards exist for a reason. It's because we need that machine or we need that procedure in order to do our job. So while elimination is the best in relation to safety, it's unfortunately not always possible because we need to have these hazards in our workplace. So then we move into the next level of minimizing the risk where we reduce the likelihood of these identified hazards causing harm. And there's four sub stages here, and that's that of substitution, where we get uh, rid of one type of tool or procedure or certain piece of equipment and replace it with a similar tool, equipment or procedure. All right, that is deemed safer. So we've substituted a similar item for the item that was a hazard, which is hopefully a bit safer. The next level is that of modification. We have a hazardous piece of equipment, we're gonna modify it in some way so that the risk level of that hazard is reduced. So for large machinery, that might be that we put guards or shields on it that protect us from sharp areas and stop us from cutting ourselves or in the computing environment, it might be putting a screen guard over a monitor so it reduces glare on the user's eye. So we are modifying the equipment in that case. The next level is that of isolation, where we move a piece of equipment into a separate room or area on its own. So that way we control how many people are using that equipment and keeping the human traffic around the equipment quite low away from the hazardous piece of equipment there. So that is isolation, moving it into an area on its own. And then finally in this category, we've got that of engineering controls. Where we apply systems and certain software two specific pieces of devices and we can monitor the hardware and how it's going and we can see its temperature levels or electrical wattage levels and that gives us feedback on where the kind of system is at and how dangerous the actual equipment is at that time. We're now going to move into the final category which is that of other controls and this is implementing safety procedures for individuals to protect themselves from the hazards associated with procedures and equipment. So there's three levels here with the first one being of administration. That might be having things such as safety signage around that notify of what are the actual risks associated with the hazards within an environment or actually having markings on the floor which tell where people are to stand when using equipment and where other people who are not using equipment should be clear of so that they don't interrupt the person using that piece of equipment. The next level is of safe practices and this is where people need to be trained in how to use equipment and essentially that they know how to use what they are doing but not just know how to use it, how to use it safely so they've been trained in how to use tools and equipment and do procedures correctly. And then the final level is that of PPE, which is personal protective equipment. It's what individuals wear when they're in a hazardous environment. Things such as goggles to protect their eyes, uh, safety hats to protect their heads, face masks to protect them from hazardous substances, coats, face shields, a whole variety of different equipment can be worn to keep people safe in an environment, depending on the context of their work. So that is all the stages in risk control specific to this subject area. Now, the other thing to point out too is Usually we don't just implement one of these. You might think of workplace environments you've been in and they use a whole number of these. That is how you develop a good risk control practice. One hazard might have a number of these processes associated with it. So we might have substituted equipment for safer equipment. We might have modified it further to make it even safer. We might ensure that staff are trained with other controls and so they know how to use the equipment that they're using and they wear PPE in that environment. So we use these on top of each other. So as we can see here, they are scaled from most effective, least effective, but when we can bind them together, we get an even safer environment for our workers to work within. So I hope this helps you understand the importance of risk control in relation to health and safety and how it kind of reduces the risk in relation to hazards in our workplace.